OK, welcome back. So just before we went for a break there, we talked about Rex and the kind of troubles at Rex um, and about why it's important to have a third player. And you see what I'm doing here, Jake? There's a link coming. Yeah. Don't leave me hanging. Because usually at this point, I throw the link out for you. You look confused and I look like an idiot. So we'll not do that again. OK. okay. Yep. So we're talking about the importance of competition. Yes, I'm And why it's important to have a smaller player. That brings us on to another story that we wrote about today, doesn't it, Jake? Yes, it does. And that story would be? Oh, the story. Yes. yes. So this on. story is uh, Vanessa Hudson, um, the CEO of Qantas, uh, speaking in Perth at the launch of the new uh, non-stop Paris service, um, which sort of got wheels up over the weekend um, using their, their 787 Dreamliners to fly non-stop um, between Perth and Paris. Um, by the way, just as an aside, uh, they appear to have fixed their problem, which uh, which which affected the Perth to London flights. Um, uh, as you know, things are a bit dicey in the Middle East at the moment, uh, and Qantas was needing to avoid Iranian airspace when they were heading uphill uh, towards mm. London. Um, they found a shortcut as they were trying. They, they, they did. Um, it's it's sort of uh, threading the needle a bit, but uh, they found this route uh, that goes over. Um, that goes over uh, I- Iraq and Iraqi and Turkish airspace. Mm. Um, so they are avoiding Iran entirely without having to divert to Singapore like they were doing for a few weeks in April. Good on you, Qantas. Anyway, uh, speaking at the launch of this uh, Perth to Paris service, um, Qantas CEO Vanessa Hudson uh, kind of suggested that there's no real room for more domestic airlines in the Australian aviation market, um, You know, particularly following the collapse of Bonza. Um, this is a quote from her. She said, if you think about why three airlines really struggle, it's a number of things. Our population, the, the US has 250 million people. We have 26 million. It's spread between the economics of being a viable airline. It's incredibly challenging because it's capital intensive. She said the next biggest challenge is carbonization, uh, decarbonization. That is significant. We believe no one can be winners or losers from decarbonization. Everyone should be doing it. And I don't think there's sufficient volume to sustainably support a number, a significant growth in the number of players. But we want to grow. She also said said, uh, quote, we are an island nation. Our economy relies on domestic aviation and the role that we play as a national carrier. We want airlines and Virgin and Rex. We want them to be sustainable. And to be sustainable, they've got to be making a certain amount of revenue to invest. We don't want a weak aviation market. Yeah. Now, see, there's two sides to every story. And one side of the story that, that, that she was saying was that she's completely correct. It is an island nation. It's a smaller population. You know, history suggests you can't have more than one or two big players. It never works. The argument against what she's saying is that is rubbish and actually the reason we can't have any more competition is because Qantas is such a monstrous thing. It's It's got so much market share and actually she's saying that it's kind of like mind games. It's almost like when the CEO of Qantas says, oh, you are never, uh, another competitor will never succeed, that's a self-fulfilling thing. They want they don't want any competition at all. Well, exactly. And we saw we saw from we saw from Bonza um, one of the reasons that, um, you know, uh, Tim Jordan, the the, the CEO of, of Bonza, went to Triple Seven Partners, um, uh, who you know again proved to be um, somewhat unreliable investors. Um, <clears throat> but the one of the reasons why he went to Triple Seven Partners was that the prevailing view was that you couldn't break into the market against Qantas and Virgin, that it couldn't be done, and so local investors didn't really want to to to, to have a go at it. And um, unfortunately, you know that the collapse of Bonza, um, which you know was due in no small part to undercapitalization on the part of under of Triple Seven Partners, um, you know ac- at least according to the the, the administrators now liquidators called Chadwick. One of the major factors um, this was this undercapitalization, but it's going to be sort of taken and, and held up again as evidence that you can't have more airlines in Australia. There's not the room when we saw that a lot that quite a few of Bonza's routes were doing pretty well. Yeah, and also, so firstly, if you were Bonza, you would say that actually it's very hard to compete when one company has such massive market share. But Rex and Bonza um, would say, actually, one of the reasons is they struggle to get slots at airports as well. They struggle to even get a foothold. So they would argue that the whole system is stacked against them. So Qantas will say, well, that's just how it works. Um for me, I think this this idea that Australia needs to move on from this idea we're a tiny little country with a tiny little population, we're never going to be able to have any more than that. That is absolute poppycock. Um, in fact, there's, I think there's very few markets um, in the world where there's so little competition. 
There is no reason why you couldn't have more. That's just how it happens to evolve. And I should say, if you're Qantas, this isn't a dig at Qantas. This is because Qantas has made some very savvy business decisions. Qantas have played their hand absolutely beautifully. So you can't knock them for having this power base. But at the same time... I don't think that this is something that, you know, it, this is just how it is forever. I mean, you know, look at look at Jetstar, um, you know, as an example of this incredibly savvy business decision. Um, you know, Qantas um, back in the early 2000s see, saw Virgin Blue coming in. They saw, you know, Ansec collapse and they thought, right, we've got to get in this low cost thing. And so that's and so they spun up Jetstar to, to compete directly against Virgin Blue. And it's, you know, possibly the most successful low cost arm of any full service carrier on, on, the, on the planet. Yeah, exactly. Um, they've also, you know, they've done very well, obviously, by the collapse of Tiger Air. They've done very well, you could argue, in Virgin shifting to this kind of mid-market position. So they now effectively are the only true full-service airline. Um, so they've got the market to themselves. Um, so the question, obviously, is um, will we eventually get a competitor with deep pockets that's willing to have a go? Arguably, we had that in the old Virgin Australia. Or two, whether the government would at some point come in and artificially try to break up Qantas, which I don't necessarily think that's a bad idea, but that obviously would be one enormous move for any government to make. Yeah, it's it's um, Qantas is... is um... I mean, you saw during the during the pandemic, you know, Qantas was in, in a lot of ways too big to fail. Mm. Um, you know, they 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 had to support Qantas because, um, you know, with Virgin sort of uh, floundering during the pandemic, Australia still needed a, a national, you know, a, a big airline to connect everything. Um, you know, even during the pandemic, you know, people still needed to go into state for for various reasons. You know, particularly government officials. Um, so. Is, is Qantas too big to fail, no. one, one, one can argue. I can't remember the exact details, but I think if you... I'm sure you wrote a story on Miss Jake. It was about a ACCC, um, like one of their quarterly reports, and they basically said in the in the routes where Bonza had gone in, it brought prices down. I'm not I'm not going crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, they, they were talking about, you know, this, this increase in competition um, ha- had sort of dragged airfares, you know, downwards with it. You know, more competition means, you know, more incentive to come in with lower prices. Um, and in fact, I think we saw when Rex started flights from Melbourne to Perth, you know, they put on sale prices of, I think, $99 one way. I think what we saw um, not so long afterwards was Virgin doing a sale to Perth with those same or lower fares. Um, so, you know, putting on more competition between the East Coast and Perth um, has already been affecting airfares um, between, you know, the, the, the East and West Coasts. Uh, and, and for a time, while Bonza was operating, I think it was the route that was Melbourne, Tullamarine to the Gold Coast. It was the first time ever in Australian history that there were four different airline groups operating the same route. Um, that being, you know, Qantas Group, Virgin, Rex and Bonza. So... Uh, it, it, we do need, I think, more of this competition to, to to add choice to the industry and to bring those airfares down and make air travel more affordable. It's not just as well um, airfares. Like we saw with Bonza, they were putting on routes that no one had ever put on before. Yes. And they were told, or everyone basically said, it will never work. And there was a great quote by Alan Joyce, and I don't think he meant it in a nasty way, to, to be fair to him, but he kind of said, you know, we've been going for however many decades. Um, we think we know which routes are going to work. If we've missed some, then shame on us. If we've missed us, then shame on us. We don't think we have. But clearly, Bond, uh, clearly Qantas had because we saw Jetstar go into um, one of Bonds's routes from the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, pow- they, they Jetstar sort of, you know, hours after um, the the liquidator hall Chadwick released the the report saying that you know uh, jet, that that Bonds should be wound up. Jetstar pounced, and this is. One situation where I really wish that Tiger Air had survived because, you know, I, I wish I could say that Tiger Air had pounced. That would be a much better headline. <laughs> but Jetstar <laughs> pounced on that route from Cairns to the Sunshine Coast, um, which apparently Bonza had been making a pretty good go of. Yeah, so you need to you need fresh ideas. You need fresh ideas into the market. And the other, and in no way would I ever suggest, and I, and I actually don't think that there is, you know, lots of collusion between Qantas and Virgin. But at the same time, if you've got two established big players and they both kind of know their their turf. There's not much of a reason for anyone to go and shake that up if they're both doing you know perfectly well in their lanes. You need those plucky little sods like Rex and Bonza who are a bit more scrappy going in there and having a go. That's how new things happen. Otherwise, we see no change whatsoever. 